Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for June 21st, 2021. It's that time of week that we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. This meeting happens at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on Mondays. You can check the CircuitPython channel on Discord for notices of a change in time, as well as add the meeting times to your calendar by uh, visiting the Adafruit CircuitPython Weekly Meeting GitHub repository and using the link there. If you want to participate in this meeting by speaking, you will need to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. Please ask any one of the moderators or admins to add you if you'd like to join. Development of CircuitPython is sponsored by Adafruit. Please support them by purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. And uh, just to recap, I think I skipped over this, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed for tiny little computers called microcontrollers. And as I mentioned, it is sponsored primarily by Adafruit. This meeting is held in five parts, which is why we put timestamps in the notes document so you can skip to the parts that interest you the most. The next part is community news and a preview of the CircuitPython and Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. After that is um, the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, a numbers-based overlook of how the project is doing. Third, and the first of two round robins, is the Hug Reports section, a chance for people to thank those in the community around them who are doing great things and helping one another. The second round robin section is status updates, where we invite you to let us know what is up in the past week, what you've been doing with CircuitPython and beyond, as well as let us know what you hope to get up to before we meet again. Then the fifth section, if we need it, is called In the Weeds. It's a time for longer form discussion, anything that is just a little bit too long to fit in status updates. And that is how the meeting will go. So I will head over to community news. And this week, um, I've kind of focused on the big headlines, but a reminder, there are a lot more community projects and all sorts of cool stuff in the newsletter. So please subscribe and get that in your inbox every Tuesday. So first up, MicroPython 1.16 has been released. Um, it includes a bunch of new stuff, including a new command line tool called MP Remote, which is a way to access the serial terminal and the file system and so forth. Um, it works on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And as part of this, improvements were made to PyBoard, including opening serial ports in exclusive mode. In the Python core, OS error exceptions now support the erno attribute. Uh, and here's one that they um, have upstreamed from CircuitPython into MicroPython. The REPL was improved so that uh, tab completion is better. It doesn't include private methods. And it will tab complete built-in module names after import is typed which um, we are very happy to see them able to take features from us. I'm not sure who prepared that to go up into MicroPython, but thank you very much for that. Uh, next up, there is a June 2020 release of Python in Visual Studio Code. This release of the Python extension uh, includes support for VS Code's Workspace Trust, jump to source code with the PyTorch profiler, and completions for dictionary keys with PyLance. And there is a link to Microsoft Dev Blogs right there in the notes. Next, uh, Python 3.10 Beta 3 is out. They do a calendar-based release, release schedule. Um, so things are working towards Python 3.10 as a stable release. There are links to Twitter and the Python mailing list. And I'm sure they would love it if uh, you would test it out with your software and give them feedback. And uh, next up, CircuitPython Speedy Key Switch Handling, thanks to our very own Dan Halbert. Uh, we've added Speedy Key Switch Handling. Um, it can handle vector and matrix keyboards, all done in the CircuitPython core. It'll make your keyboard projects a lot easier and a ton faster. We do this work in the background, and it handles all the work for you and just tells you when you get a key press or a key release event. Uh, Lamore did a video which shows her running it on the 12 key macro pad, which is an upcoming product. Last but not least, the CircuitPython deep dive stream with Scott has been offline for a couple of weeks, although I suspect uh, he will let us know that he is back on very soon. And that's what I've got for this week. For more, subscribe to the CircuitPython weekly newsletter at adafruitdaily.com. 
or check out the complete archives. The link is in the notes document. We like to highlight the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, and we invite you to contribute your own news or project. You can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag your tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And thank you very much to whoever is putting those links in the chat. All right, we go to step two, phase two, the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Um, so I will first give the overall and then hand it off to some other um, members of the community to talk about the uh, different parts of the overall project. So overall, we had a smaller number of pull requests merged in the last week, 16 of them from 10 authors. Um, the name on Mui HV is new to me. Uh, reviewers, we had eight, and we had 25 closed issues by eight people and 14 open by 13 people. So although our activity in pull requests is lower numerically than in a lot of other recent weeks, uh, we see a lot of good activity on issues and we had a net decrease in the number of issues. So that all seems promising. And now I will pass it to Scott to tell us about the core. Uh, although if you don't feel you can do the core overall, you can pass it back to me or we'll put Dan on the spot, your choice. Uh, I'm happy to read it off. Uh, okay. So for the core, we had four pull requests merged from four different authors. Um, so thank you to all our authors. Uh, we had two reviewers. Uh, so thank you to our reviewers. Uh, we have 24 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest, we have three that are older than 200 days. So again, uh, if you want to get started and help contributing, uh, take a look at some of those old PRs. Some of them are just for boards, so they're like relatively easy to take a look at, um, although they do require you to have the boards themselves. So please take a look at that. Uh, Issues-wise, we had 14 closed issues by four people, six open by six people, so we're net down, which is great. Uh, for a total of 459 open issues, uh, which you can see by going to github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython slash issues. Uh, we have five active milestones. We have zero 6xx bug fixes. Uh, we have seven or 65 7.0 issues, and we have two issues not assigned a milestone. Uh, we track how many issues are not assigned a milestone as a way to know how uh, we are doing in terms of triaging. Um, so that's that. Uh, overall, I would say uh, things are going good. We were just chatting uh, in our internal meeting. Uh, I think the next step for 7.0 is to take a look at these 65 open issues and decide which ones are a priority prior to the next stable release, uh, which we would like to start uh, working on and, and driving the bug count down so that we can do a 7.0 stable release. That's it for me. All right. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. And next, I will pass the baton to Ketney to give us an overview of the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, as well as a couple extras. So that's everything that begins with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and uh, includes our cookie cutter and the community bundle as well. So we had six pull requests merged by four authors and four reviewers. Um, we have a total now of 48 open pull requests. Uh, we have eight closed issues by six people and six opened by six people, leaving us with 312 open issues across all of the libraries. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, a list of open pull requests, a list of open issues, and a list of library infrastructure issues. Uh, you can go and search the issues by label. Good first issue is a good place to start if you're new to everything or uh, consider bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little more complicated. You can also take a look and find if you have hardware for something specific and you're interested in doing something with that library, you can check out and see if there's any issues there. Um, in terms of PRs, uh, take a look at any open PRs, see whether or not um, there's anything uh, in terms of syntax or spelling or that sort of thing uh, if you don't have the hardware. If you do have the hardware, give it a test. Um, that's a great way to get started reviewing. And once you're comfortable, leave a comment that you uh, did that. And once you're more comfortable with that, we can consider upgrading you to our um, actual review team. Uh, so that's a good way to get started reviewing um, on the Python side of this. 
Uh, in terms of uh, new libraries, we didn't have any this week, but we had a number of updated libraries which are listed in the notes doc. Um, I don't know that I have much to say overall. Uh, we've been trying to get through all the open pull requests. The oldest one right now is 549 days old. Um, Jose David has been going through, uh, has a, a bead on um, every open pull request right now, uh, but we need to discuss uh, his suggestions about what to do with them. So we're trying to get through those. If you have a PR that's open and you're waiting on us to comment or waiting on something, please feel free to comment on it and let us know so we can pick that up uh, and make sure that things don't languish. Um, and other than that, thank you to everyone who's been contributing. And uh, remember that uh, we are always available to help you get started if that's something you're interested in doing. Thank you, Katni. The next subsection is about Blinka, and for that, I will let Maker Melissa tell you what's what. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. Uh, we, this week, we had six open or six pull requests merged by three authors and four reviewers. Uh, that leaves four open pull requests. I think a couple of those are mine. Uh, there are were three closed issues by one person and two open by two people, leaving a net of 57 open issues. There were one, wow, 11,257 Pi wheels downloads in the last month. And uh, there were, there are 75 uh, boards currently supported. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. And that brings us to Hug Reports. Um, I will start off and we will go around in the order that I find things in the notes document. And we're inviting you to tell us uh, about what the people around us are doing to improve our community and make things work better. So I wanted to start off uh, by thanking Dan for some good memory size optimization ideas, although it came to my attention that at least one of these uh, ideas was also from Scott um, that I will mention a little bit later. I wanted to thank the MicroPython team for another release, version 1.16 that I talked about earlier. A hug report to Foamy Guy for chiming in with useful issue, useful information on an issue. A group hug in celebration of reaching pull request number 4900 in the core. I'd like to see those double zeros. We'll have a triple zero soon enough. Uh, and lastly, a hug report for Summersoft and Dylan for keeping the Adabot running smoothly. There was a little maintenance work required over the weekend, but they completed it in time, so we had our numbers for the State of Circuit Python section. And with that, I will pass it to Katni, and after that to Melissa. Thanks, Jeff. So my first hug report is to Summersoft for fixing the library reports. Uh, after breaking them, sure, but they're fixed now. Uh, to Dylan for figuring out where the issue was in Adabot so Summersoft could fix it. To JP, Noah, and Pedro for chatting with me about creating video content, making excellent suggestions, and agreeing to provide feedback and assistance. Uh, to Jeff for taking care of the post-meeting tasks last week so I could meet a deadline. Uh, to everyone contributing to the CircuitPython Community Code of Conduct PR. And to Jeff, Andon, and Mr. Certainly for suggesting an update to the Adafruit Community Code of Conduct, and to Andon and Mr. Certainly for agreeing to put together a draft of the su suggested update. Here, here, I should have thanked them as well. All right, uh, with that, we will go to Maker Melissa and then to Tanud. Uh, let's see, uh, for my hack reports, I just uh, wanted to start by giving one to Le Samurai Purpa for uh, your work with deduplicating code and platform detect and a group hug to everyone else. And that's it. All right, Scott, you are up next. Then it's anybody's guess who is at the top of the alphabet. <laughs> Hello, uh, just a group hug from me because I was disconnected from the CircuitPython world as I was on vacation. So all right. thank you all. We muddled through as best we could without you, but it's nice to see you back. All right, I have notes from C. Grover and Charles, and then after that it'll pass to Dan. So uh, C. Grover has a hug report to paint your dragon, Phil B., for his history of producing awesome graphics code. He makes it easier to understand some very complex ideas and approaches. And also, uh, C. Grover has a group hug. And Charles Berniford 
has a group hug. So Dan, go ahead, and then I will read notes from David. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'd like to thank um, a higher effect for taking over uh, sleep. I think I've, I've thanked be him before, but uh, he's really keeping track of how each chip family can do sleep and what are the problems between them. They're all idiosyncratic in various ways, and it's hard to find out, figure out a common API, and uh, he's working on how to achieve that. That's great. Thank you, Jeff, for uh, getting the bug to take on yet another way of shrinking our firmware even more, and if we keep this up, then everything will fit in 20 bytes. Um, Thanks uh, to Lady Ada, who has tested my new keypad module in multiple ways with new hardware that she's designing. It worked out great. That's very nice. And she had some suggestions for the API. And thanks to TAC for fixing a, an NRF issue where it took a long time for uh, the REPL to come up for mysterious reasons. And that's fixed now. It may have also caused other things to be fixed. We'll see. OK. All right. Um, I will read notes from David, and then I will pass it to Dylan. Uh, so David Gloud writes, A hug to Brent for thinking about me as a beta tester for Whippersnapper. A hug for Dan H. for the keypad module, and to me for the camera library, both as demonstrated by Lady Ada. And a hug to Foamy Guy for streaming about the GitHub CI. All right. Take it away, Dylan, then I will read notes from Foamy Guy. Um, so, hug report to carbonated water um, for lending me a CNC and helping me get it working, um, which was a lot harder than I expected. Um, hug report to Sonarsoft for all their awesome work on Adabot, and then a group hug. Thank you. All right, notes from Foamy Guy, and then Higher Effect gets to round out the section. Uh, Foamy Guy writes a hug to Noe and Pedro for making and sharing so many neat 3D printable parts. A hug to Katni for making the simple text display library to make it easier for people to quickly display text without needing to understand display I.O. as much. And a group hug. And higher effect, it's up to you. Alrighty. Uh, thanks this week mostly to Dan for his reviews of the incoming PRs that I'm uh, looking at and um, uh, just a bunch of sleep sanity checks and just uh, thinking about thinking about sleep. Um, and uh, helping me out with that. And then uh, a group hug to all others. A little quiet over here on the summer, I feel like. It is a little bit quiet, but it's also good to be a little bit laid back for uh, a brief moment. So it is. I'm At not complaining. That's how I'm feeling. All right. Well, we'll move on to status updates, which is a round robin in a similar vein to hug reports. And by the way, if you wanted to help out the meeting by running uh, one of the round robin sections, just uh, contact the uh, meeting leader in advance and work that out with them. We would be happy to have any one of you um, do this so that we can just relax and enjoy the meeting a little bit more. If not, no worries. Anyway, so uh, last week was a pretty productive work for me, a pr productive week for me. I substantially completed the library for the OV2640 camera. I merged MicroPython 1.16. That PR is ready for review, and Scott kindly offered to review it. Uh, I implemented an idea that was maybe Dan's or maybe Scott's for reducing uh, the size of property objects in the core, but the net savings was pretty small, and it probably affects performance uh, in a negative way. So we're likely to leave it out for now. I think that idea was solidly Dan's. It's the second idea that was maybe Scott's. Uh, to split up the type structure for types in the core. I got this working on the Trinket M0 and it saves one and a half kilobytes, which would definitely be enough to let us enable some of the features we want, uh, but it requires more discussion. It requires um, coordinating with MicroPython and MicroLab about a new way of declaring these type objects in the core, uh, even if we decide we want to do it. Uh, and I also need to benchmark whether it affects the speed. That also, there is a PR on GitHub. Uh, it's not ready for review in the sense that I don't think we should say yes to that PR in its current form. Uh, it needs more work. Uh, so anyway, up this week, I will finish up the OV2640 library, which I think is just uh, tagging a release. 
and I will get that added to the bundle. So next week we will have a new library to list off. I will start writing a guide that will cover the OV2640 and OV7670 cameras in CircuitPython. The OV7670 works on three of our boards, the Metro M4 Grand Central, the ESP32 S2 where I've tested it on the Kaluga, and the RP2040 where I've tested it on the Pico. And then the 2640 doesn't work on the Grand Central for reasons that we're not gonna explore for now, um, but it works on those other two systems. And so those are the five combinations that this guide is gonna cover. Uh, and then in between that, I'm gonna start working on a project for an upcoming guide. I'm excited to do a, a project guide again. It's been a while, and for this one, I get to design and order a PCB. So this will be a lot of fun, but also a little bit of waiting um, for printed circuit boards. So next, I will read notes from Jose David, and then I will pass the stick to Katni. Jose David, uh, who is missing the meeting this week, wants us to know that this week he'll be working on the PRs and uh, would like to discuss that with Katni. So next is Katni, and then followed by Maker Melissa. Thanks, Jeff. So last week, I published the slider trinky guide, started the QT2040 trinky guide, and uh, along with that, um, created the CircuitPython I2C template. Um, I also managed to figure out a sort of concurrency in Arduino, which is not CircuitPython related, but was definitely a big deal for me. Um, this morning, I completed my first successful rebase without help. That was excellent. Uh, so this week, finish up the QT Trinky guide, update the slider Trinky guide with uh, a MIDI example. I need to test a PR on PyPixelBuff. Um, that should be a quick one. I'm going to continue working on the CircuitPython Community Code of Conduct PR, uh, discuss open PRs with Jose David. Um, and then something I didn't add here, but will, is that um, we are going to, after the QT Trinky guide and the rest of those miscellaneous is taken care of this week, start um, going back and replacing the, which was the whole point of the templates in the first place, um, the CircuitPython Essentials pages in other previous board guides with the templates. So that um, basically, uh, instead of a generalized page that has wiring diagrams for seven or eight different boards, it will be a page that is specific to um, the particular board that the, that the guide is for. And that was uh, the original plan, but we're gonna actually start going back through it. Um, so outside of CircuitPython, PyOhio accepted my talk proposal the first five minutes, which will be pre-recorded, and the conference happens on uh, July 31st. And I received my second COVID vaccine last week after a bit of a debacle, but uh, I have it, and it's good. Um, and uh, that's what's going on with me. Thank you, Katni. So PyOhio is pure virtual this year? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, next up is Maker Melissa and then Scott. So go ahead, Melissa. Okay, last week I finished fixing the remaining repos from the move over from master domain. I figured out how to reassign uh, the chip enable pins on the Raspberry Pi boards to avoid deassert conflicts with Blinka. And I wrote a script to assist that and updated the Raspberry Pi Blinka guide. I also refactored the web serial ESP tool to allow better reuse of the core uh, programming for uh, use of Flipper Snapper. And this week I'm going to be testing ESP Home with a recently updated Arduino ESP32 package to see if I2C and Wi Fi are working. Um, I'm going to work, uh, be working on the Whipper Snapper package to a Whipper Snapper package to create a file system from a table. Uh, using JavaScript, and I'm going to be starting a guide with Microsoft Load. And that's it. Thank you. All right, Scott, you are up. Then we'll go back to the top of the alphabet. Hello. Uh, last week was vacation for me, so uh, basically I'm buried under a pile of email. Um, those of you who may not know, but I do like this zero inbox thing, so I have no email on red uh, after I do my email every morning. So I have seven work days worth of email to go through. 
Uh, so it'll be lots of reviews and catch up and all of that stuff. Also do the forums. Um, so lots of that probably today and tomorrow, if not leaking into Wednesday. And then uh, after that, it's back to polishing up the BLE workflow code and getting a, a pull request out for that. Um, and uh, got to sync up with the folks doing the doing the uh, apps as well to see how well my code that I threw over the wall before I left uh, worked out. That sounds good. Um, thank and you. I, oh, I, I do think I, I do think I'll stream on Friday as well. I think I think I will. I, a lot yeah. of people will be happy to see your return. <laughs> I may not I mean, have anything to work on, but <laughs> you may still be getting through your inbox. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully I'm done by then. All right. Uh, so I have notes from C. Grover, and then we will hear from Dan. C. Grover converted another legacy Arduino project to CircuitPython. This week's challenge was one of my favorites, Phil Burgess's Fake TV for Engineers, a successful conversion working on the documentation now. And unrelated-ish, preserved and reinstalled two interior doors in the 1940s section of the house. This was a week for legacy projects indeed. I think a legacy 1940s door is more legacy than Arduino, but yeah, anyway. All right, next is Dan, then I'll have notes from David. Thank you. All right, uh, so I finished the keypad module, as was mentioned, um, which supports uh, scanning keys in three different ways. Um, Lady Ada did functionality testing of this with some uh, upcoming products. And um, PR is now ready for review after multiple changes to the API and if some more additions over the past few days to kind of uh, flesh it out completely. Uh, we talked just before this meeting in an internal meeting and we'd like to try to make uh, a 700, um, another alpha or perhaps even a beta if we decide that the APIs are not really going to change so we could start a, a beta series so that we can include all the stuff that's been ha happened in the past few weeks. And now that I finished this, I'll be going back to um, 700 bug hunting, uh, which we'd like to either defer some things or fix them in time to get 70 final out. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, well, David writes, this space is left intentionally blank. It's not even top secret. It's just nothing. So I hope you're able to get back to doing some projects soon, David. Uh, but next, I'd like to hear what Dylan has been up to, and then I will read some notes from some folks. <laughs> also, um, before you, you start, I just have to read what Katni said. She said to Seagrover, I'm now picturing you having decade-themed sections in your house. Anyway, decorating ideas from Katni. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go ahead, Dylan. I'm sorry. Yeah, Dylan, <laughs> no, I'm you're sorry. fine. You're fine. Um, so last week, um, I borrowed a CNC from a friend. And just this morning, I actually finally got it working, which was really exciting. Just a case of terrible documentation and a bunch of broken download links, um, but got it working. Um, I did a lot of like the cutting for the alarm clock. Um, now I just need to like get it from three quarters of an inch thick to a quarter of an inch thick, which is going to take so long. But um, yeah, and then just ate about stuff. Um, bunch of random stuff with that. Um, and then this week, I'd like to finish doing the stuff with the CNC, and I have, like, a bunch of different guys I'm working on right now, so. All right, thank you. I will read notes from uh, Alvaro and Foamy Guy, and then pass it to Hyro... Hy Sorry, your name is now Hybrofact. Uh, Hyrofact to uh, once again wrap up this section. Anyway... Alvaro, Fede2 writes, last week, porting Glinka to two RISC V boards, but having issues with libgpiod on both. This week, looking into whether this is a kernel issue or a libgpiod issue, no idea at the moment. And next month, building a house and moving out of the city, so mostly AFK. And then Foamy Guy also has notes for us. Last week, learned a ton about PyPI version strings and GitHub actions. Finalized code and the 3D model for NeoTrinky Brightness Crank. 
New commits to Stubbs PR to handle the PyPI uploading for separate stable and dev versions of the Stubbs. I believe it's ready to have their credentials added to the environment and to be reviewed again. And this week, work on the NeoTrinky Brightness Crank Guide and trying to create a bundle library for the a bundle repository for the CircuitPython organization. And now my last chance to say HireEffect's name for the meeting. HireEffect, you are up. Alrighty, uh, this last week I merged in and modified the set next file PR. This is a PR that allows you to uh, make CircuitPython start from a different file than code.py uh, on your uh, file system. Uh, the next time it restarts and has a bunch of different things. This is intended for use with menus, so you can make a menu. Um, or, well, it's intended for a couple things, but one of the uses is that you make a menu and you can select the, like, a game or something, some sort of sub-program, and it'll start that up next. Um, I've brought that up to speed, but there's still some work to do because there's a bunch of complications with how this interacts with Deep Sleep. Deep Sleep is basically a reset, and so storing the file for the set next, um, for the next file to run, is a little bit tricky because Deep Sleep will basically uh, destroy all of the RAM, and so we have to figure out where we're going to put this file in non volatile memory. So uh, I'm, I have a little perspective new API for how that's going to work across all these different ports, which all work differently. And uh, assuming that uh, Scott is all good with that, um, I'm going to be working on this week, that this week, which will have uh, kind of a bunch of bleed over work um, related to sleep memory across all these different ports. So um, that's my big job for this week. Um, and uh, as kind of a little side thing, just because this is the second oldest PR that we have, uh, would be re rebasing and refactoring the exception tracking PR. So that's a that's a kind of a related PR that allows you to um, uh, see what the last exception was on CircuitPython. And that's what I'll be working on this week. Okay. So a bunch of cross cross run information storage, basically. Thank you. It will be nice to have those PRs finally. Uh merged so it's good to see that work that you're doing yeah we'll have we'll have fewer in the in the code re, uh, the core report it'll shorten the the number of months associated with the oldest one all right and with that we are ready to wrap up status updates and move to in the weeds um i will actually interrupt in the weeds um and i want to mention that we have settled the date for circuit python day 2021 and it is going to be August 6th, which is a Friday. We will be getting more information out about that soon, probably in the newsletter and also on the Adafruit blog. Um, and we'd like to invite you to think of ways to celebrate CircuitPython Day with us because it's not just an Adafruit thing, it is a community thing. And yes, 8-6-2021 if you want to write it as the Europeans do. Um, and unless anybody wants to add a comment to that, uh, David says, what about the calendar from DigiKey? We decided for a number of reasons uh, that August is a better time, and so we are going with it. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have a discussion with DigiKey before they set the calendar that way. They took the date from 2020, and um, it's what happened, and this is what we're doing. So, yeah. No hard feelings, but your DigiKey calendar does require revision. And celebrating twice is also a great idea. Uh, I believe that the DigiKey calendar placed it on 9-9, which was the day in 2020. But historically, it's been in August, and we're returning to that this year. All right. Uh, so yeah, I will pass it to Dylan, who has uh, a topic about the Adabot. Um, yeah, so over like the last, I guess, probably a year or so, um, like, based on some, like, initial work that Foamy Guy did, I've been, like, do making a lot of scripts that, like, just, like, speed up things that I've been doing, um, with, like, library sweeps, like, getting the list of all the libraries, stuff like that, um, and I was wondering what people thought of the possibility of kind of, like, either maybe, like, putting some of those scripts in the Adabot repository and making 
them in their own repository, or maybe like writing died on just like using Adabot for those sort of things. Um, yeah. Are they all related to Adabot? Um, pretty much all of them are, but not all. Okay. I think um, including scripts that are related to Adabot in the Adabot repo, perhaps in a folder that's, you know, separate so that it keeps yeah. it um, keeps it clean <clears throat> would be fine. Okay. Sorry. Um, and then... Uh, I, I think it's I think it might be alright to have a separate repo for scripts that are unrelated to Adabot. Okay. Um what I would suggest is maybe create a repo on your own account. Mm -hmm. Um put put the stuff in there and we can take a look at it and decide whether um it makes sense to transfer it to Adafruit is basically yeah. what I would think would make the most sense. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, those were the two in the weeds topics. So unless anybody has anything else, I will go ahead and wrap up the meeting for the day, for the week. This has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for June 21st, 2021. Thank you everybody who joined us live. And if you're watching this or listening after the fact, thank you very much for that. Um, we will hold our next meeting on the 28th at the regular date and time, but then the subsequent meeting will be moved a day later due to the American holiday of the 4th of July, also known as Independence Day. Um, this is the other part of the end notes that I always forget, so pardon me while I look at the document. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit and will also be available on major podcast services. We'll also feature it in the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. If you'd like to speak in the meeting or just to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. Uh, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.